In Hong Kong, buildings consume 90% of electricity and they generate 60% of greenhouse gas emissions. The Hong Kong government is concerned, so it's working to slash the city's carbon footprint more than 50% from 2005 to 2020. A new building in Kowloon Bay models extreme change, and it opens to the general public in mid-December. My name is uh, Gui Yi Li. Uh, I'm the uh, director of Zero Carbon Building within Construction Industry Council. This project has started at the end of 2010, and we uh, finished it uh, in June uh, this year. We developed this project in collaboration with the Hong Kong government. Now the major missions of this building, number one is to serve as an uh, uh, exhibition center for the latest eco-building design technologies. Now for that, we have over 80 different uh, technologies being adopted here. We do not need all those 80 different technologies to achieve zero carbon emissions. But we really want to show to the industry stakeholders how those technology work in practice. Um, second mission is to serve as an educational center. Uh, and then we hope that uh, the visitors, every visitor when they come, um, they could uh, take something away either to their home or to their work or to the project. 90% of the site is landscape area. And the other end of this land landscape area is the first native urban woodlands. It's not only for exhibition, it's a functional office space. Lee and his team have offices inside. The building uses a three-part strategy to minimize carbon emissions. One is uh, through the adoption of uh, passive design uh, measures. What is so-called passive design measures, uh, such as the use of the natural ventilation by opening windows and, uh, and also maximize the use of the uh, daylighting. Uh, that's why you see a lot of uh, big windows. This itself does not consume any energy. And uh, through this adoption of passive design measures, we managed to save 20% of energy compared to the current standard practice. The second component is through the adoption of energy efficient active system. Because we still need to use air conditioning in summer. And also we still need to use lighting uh, when the natural daylight is not sufficient. Through the adoption of the energy efficient active system, uh, we managed to save another 25% of uh, energy com compared to the current standard uh, practice. Now, this active system, uh, the examples are high volume, low speed ventilation fan. We have 2,800 sensors uh, being installed throughout this building. Now, these are two of the sensors. It monitors the temperature, and after a while, it switches to CO2, humidity, and other parameters. The last component of the strategy of achieving zero carbon emission is the adoption of renewable energy generation system to provide the energy needs. We have two kinds of renewable energy system. One is solar panel energy generation system. That provides 70% of the needs of the building. Another source of the renewable energy generation is the use of a biofuel to generate electricity. Now the biofuel itself is made of waste cooking oil. Now this uh, biofuel generation system provides just over 100% of our needs. So now you can see that we have uh, quite a lot of surplus energy. And uh, that surplus energy is exported uh, to the electricity grid. Over a certain period of time, it will be sufficient to offset the energy consumed during the construction stage. Lee concedes that the building is an ongoing case study and his zero carbon skyscraper is still just a dream for Hong Kong's hyperdense reality. But he won't stop dreaming. For China Daily, this is Doug Meggs.